Greetings of peace to all of you. I'm so happy and honored to be here welcoming you, the MPAC family, to our 19th annual convention and banquet. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank my fellow board members for their service. And let me also thank and acknowledge our co-founder, Mr. Abdul Hamid Yunus. May God reward his efforts. And of course, no acknowledgement would be complete here if I did not recognize our mentor and our spiritual North Star, Dr. Maher Hatut. May God rest his soul and bless his family. So tonight, I'm here to address you as the chair of the board of directors. But I wasn't always the chair. My first role in this organization was 18 years ago, in the summer of 2001, as a summer intern. I spent the summer after my freshman year at UC Berkeley interning at the organization back before we owned our own building, when we were still in a cramped office space in Koreatown, back when we only had three or four full-time uh, staff members, back when our budget was only around $600,000. And that summer was foundational to my identity as a Muslim American, one who is rooted in building what we have here in the United States not just replicating what our ancestors may have done in some other country in some foreign land. And then just a few short weeks after I completed my internship and went back to Berkeley, the whole world changed. And had it not been for the fact that I had just completed this internship, I would have been rudderless, navigating in this post 9-11 world as a Muslim American. What would happen to our civil liberties? Would we be put in internment camps? Would we be free to practice our faith without shame? We had built plenty of mosques throughout the country, but had we developed the tools and the skills we would need to navigate these new obstacles? And despite struggling with all these questions, I had a tremendous sense of optimism because of the work that I knew MPAC was doing. I knew that MPAC had spent its entire existence building partnerships, building expertise, building the credibility that we would so desperately need going forward. And that's when I knew I was not just a former intern. I was in it for the long haul. And I was part of something bigger. So soon after completing my education and getting my law degree, I joined MPAC's National Board of Directors back in 2008. That was about 10 years ago. And give or take, you know, a few years here and there, I've been on the board ever since volunteering my time out of my personal life and my law practice and you know putting my effort and time and money into this organization and and I'm doing that with some fantastic board members so while we're on the topic of board members I want to highlight how we've grown and matured as a body like all nonprofits we came from humble backgrounds and humble beginnings back in 1988 even though our work reached all the way to Washington DC and gained us credibility with the country's key power centers. Our staff, our supporters, our donors, our board members, everyone was from right here in LA. But since then, we have grown in, into an organization that truly is national in scope. And that's reflected in our current leadership. Today, half of our board members are spread throughout the country, from the Midwest to New York State to the DC metro area. But make no mistake, these board members offer much more than just geographic diversity. Each of them is highly qualified and brings a unique set of skills and experience. We have Zaki Berzinji. He was appointed by President Obama himself to serve in the Office of Public Engagement as the White House liaison to the Muslim American community and other faith-based groups. And he still is a public affairs advisor to this day. Brenda Abdel Al, she runs her own public policy consulting firm. And before that, she was director at a national legal advocacy organization. I'm extremely proud and honored to work with such distinguished individuals. And I hope you appreciate Zucky and Brenda and my other board members and myself. We could have picked any organization to devote, to devote our time and resources towards. But we chose MPAC because we understand that the work that MPAC has to offer is so unique and so critical today. So let's explore that a bit. Why MPAC? Let's start with the basics. Who is MPAC? What is our vision for a better world? How do we get there? It's simple. 
We work to promote and, and strengthen American pluralism by one, increasing understanding, and two, improving policies that impact American Muslims. And we do this by engaging in three spheres, our government, our media and entertainment industry, and our communities. Now here's the part that continues to inspire me today. What are the guiding principles that define the work that we do? In other words, what sets us apart from other civic organizations and other Muslim nonprofits? Many organizations are focused around a specific issue or advancing a certain political perspective or philosophy. But MPAC's work is built around six bedrock principles that are inherent in the DNA of the Islamic belief system and this country's founding principles. Mercy, justice, peace, human dignity, freedom, equality. And to us, these are more than just buzzwords. And I'll show you how by highlighting some of our programs and achievements in the process. Justice finds voice in the laws we create and the government we entrust to implement them. And that's why one of my favorite achievements at MPAC is our key role in establishing and running the Congressional Leadership Development Program. CLDP is the first and only program of its kind where American Muslims participate in a fellowship with congressional offices in Washington, D.C. This fosters pride in government service and it helps build a pipeline to careers on Capitol Hill and across federal agencies. Through CLDP, we are investing in the future of American Muslims in government. And that's why your investment in us is so critical. Human dignity. Even though we claim it to be self-evident that all men were created equal, we see that white supremacy and other forms of bigotry continue to be a scourge on our country. And that's why I was so proud earlier this year when my fellow board member, Omar Ritchie, testified before the US House of Representatives on the topic of addressing white supremacy. With the country's eyes upon him, Omar had the following to say. Our nation has been built by people of diverse backgrounds who work for something larger than themselves and in the process make our society stronger, our nation greater, and our world freer. Along with fellow Americans in other fields of public service, we walk the sometimes arduous path of civic duty, a patriotic endeavor to be sure, all in pursuit of building a more perfect union for future generations. Now, Omar was right. The path is arduous because building things is often much more difficult than addressing what's wrong with what exists. Now, let me be clear. We applaud those who challenge unjust laws and unfair portrayals through protest and boycott and using the courts to effect social change. And we are there every step of the way with you. Now, I'm an attorney by trade, I'm a litigator. I understand the power of the courts to effect social change. But MPAC's work is different. Our work is focused on the ground level by working with policymakers and opinion shapers so that Muslims have a voice in creating and implementing the laws and the narratives that impact us all. That's what no one else is doing. That's why I'm so committed to this organization. So you will hear plenty tonight about the work that we do. So, and let me close by thanking all of you and making a request. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year, and we've set a goal of raising $265,000 to fund the work that we plan to do in 2020. And so far, we've raised about $165,000, so we're almost there. But we still have a ways to go, and we need your financial support so we can continue to build a lasting model for positive change. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And thank you for giving me the honor of serving as MPAC's chair of the Board of Directors. Salam alaikum.